two emergency management associates. We're coming to you from the Area Command, 392 miles west of Kitty Hawk Beach, North Carolina. We want to welcome everybody to our program tonight. Folks, we are broadcasting from our phone. I don't want to take the chance right now on broadcasting on the computer. On the computer there have been some problems recently. recently. We don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry we had some um, audio issue just now, and I solved that. Anyway, we didn't want to broadcast from the computer tonight until we get all of the issues taken care of. But I have plenty of information here to share with you tonight. Now, for the past several days over in Indonesia, We've had some issues with volcanoes, multiple issues with volcanoes literally around the world during the past even two months now. Over at Mount Ruang, R-U-A-N-G, R-U-A-N-G, Mount Ruang is on the northern side of Sulawesi, Indonesia. It's in the Sanguine Islands, S-A-N-G-U-I-N-E Islands over in Indonesia. Yesterday, especially, Mount Ruang erupted up to 69,000 feet high. 69,000 feet high. That was over in the stratosphere. That was up in the stratosphere, guys. That was huge. I'm just telling you, that was a huge eruption. We have not had such a huge eruption since we had a major eruption over in the um, Kamchatka Peninsula uh, back in 2020. When that volcano erupted, it went up to 85,000 feet, also high in the stratosphere. Now, hot molten lava is continu continuing to glow in the crater of Mount Rang in Indonesia. It is continuing to erupt. On Wednesday, the 17th, today is the 18th, on Thursday, yesterday morning, Indonesia authorities issued a, a tsunami alert after eruptions at Ruang Mountain sent ash thousands of feet high. Officials ordered more than 11,000 people to leave the area. 11,000 people were living in that area, and they were ordered to evacuate. Indonesian authorities closed an airport in the nearby vicinity, and doing so left thousands of people homeless. Residents left their homes near the erupting volcano today, early this morning, due to the dangers of spreading ash, falling rocks, and hot volcanic clouds, and the possibility of a tsunami. Now, I want to preface this. I want to give you a good idea of what's going on. Okay? Mount Ruang, last time it erupted uh, about 50 years ago, the volcano collapsed. The one flank, the side of the volcano collapsed, and it sent thousands of pounds, tons of rock, and molten lava out into the ocean, which did cause a tsunami. Officials don't know, and I don't know, you don't know. Nobody has any clue what's going to happen over in Indonesia with this volcano. But authorities are already putting orders into place to keep the area evacuated, and also they've issued a tsunami advisory. Because if that volcano collapses like it did last time, this volcano could be in danger of hundreds of thousands of lives all over central Indonesia. People left their homes this morning, spreading ash and falling rock. Now, what have we said when we talked about falling rock before? Falling rock. The volcano is erupting rock from the summit of the volcano. Huge 
molten lava rock had been flung into the air and are rolling down the side of Mount Ruang today. Spreading ash, okay? When we have an eruption that high into the atmosphere, it's spreading ash literally around the world. I spoke to Rob52. Most of you know who I'm talking about. I spoke to Rob52 yesterday. We talked about this, okay? Ash up in the stratosphere is going to be spread literally around the world. We may even see some hazy skies here in the United States as that ash makes its way around the world. It's going to go north at some point. And that ash, and yes, Indonesia is in the southern hemisphere. But that ash, as that cloud moves around the world, it's going to move north. And we may also see some light ash clouds high in the atmosphere here in North America. I'm just putting the information out there for you. Okay. Over in Indonesia, the dangers of spreading ash, falling rock, and volcanic clouds, and the possibility of a tsunami in that area are very real. Mount Ruang is on the northern side of the Sulawesi Island over there in central Indonesia. At least five large eruptions yesterday put up the idea from the Center for Volcanology and Geological Disaster Mitigation to issue its highest level alert, indicating an active eruption. Ruang Crater emitted white gray smoke continuously today, reaching more than 500 meters high, 500 meters high above the peak. That was today. Like I said, Ruang Volcano has been erupting up to 69,000 feet high. People have been ordered to stay at least six kilometers, 3.7 miles from the 725 meter peak. It's a peak that's 2,378 feet high. More than 11,000 people live in the affected area and they were told to leave. At least 800 people so far have done so. 800 people have evacuated. Some 11,000 people were told to leave. The international airport in Monado City was temporarily closed today as the volcanic ash clouds spewed high into the air. We have closed flight er operations at Sam Ratulangi Airport due to the spread of volcanic ash, which could endanger flight safety, according to Ambar Surioko, head of the regional airport authority there in Indonesia. Eruptions yesterday evening spewed volcanic ash approximately 69,000 to 70,000 feet high into the atmosphere. That is according to the Australian Bureau of Meteorology and Volcanic Ash Advisory Center coming out of Northern Australia. The Bureau said in a statement this morning that it was tracking and forecasting the ash dispersion from Indonesia. Indonesia's Volcanology Center noted the risk from the volcanic eruption included the possibility that part of the volcano could collapse into the sea and cause a tsunami. In December 2018, Indonesia's Anak Krakatau volcano erupted and collapsed, losing more than three quarters of its volume. Three quarters of the volcano at Anak Krakatau was lost. It fell into the sea. This is not the first time. This is not the first time that this kind of action has happened, either here in, in or over in Indonesia, or even here in the United States or in the Northern Hemisphere. It's not the first, first time that a volcano would collapse. We saw it at Mount St. Helens back in 1980 when the volcano literally blew out the side, blew out the northwest side of Mount St. Helens. It could happen again. 
like I said, in 2018, Anak Krakatau, the cousin of Krakatau volcano erupted and it collapsed. It lost three quarters of its volume of volcano and triggered a powerful tsunami that killed 400 people. In 1871, an eruption of Mount Ruang also triggered a tsunami, a large tsunami. Tagulang Island, East Ruang Volcano, could be at risk if a volcanic collapse happens again. Its residents were those that were being told to evacuate. People who live in Tagulang Ang Island area are within six kilometer radius they must be evacuated to a safe place right now, outside the six kilometer radius. They must be evacuated. The Disaster Mitigation Agency in Indonesia is trying to assist with the evacuation of those people now. Everyone, everyone, according to Abdul Mahari, who is a spokesman for the Disaster Mitigation Agency, said that Anyone who lives near the coast should be aware of the potential for incandescent rocks to erupt. Hot clouds and tsunami waves could be triggered by the collapse of the volcano into the sea. The agency said residents will be lo lo relocated to Monado, the nearest city on Sulawesi Island, which is a six-hour journey by boat. As we have shown you before, the islands in Indonesia are all over the place, especially in central Indonesia. People live on those small islands, and when these earthquakes happen, these small islands feel most of the earthquakes, unless the earthquakes are out in the ocean. And I've told you that if the earthquakes are way out in the ocean, away from any kind of land or any kind of islands, the ocean waters absorb the shock waves from the earthquakes. In this case, this volcano is on land. It's on land. It's erupting large lava rock into the air. We've seen it happen in other volcanoes. When that happens, those large, huge lava rock go flying down the side of the volcano. It's happened over in Sumatra earlier this year. We spoke of that when that volcano, Marapi, M-A-R-A-P-I, volcano erupted in January. One person was killed during the initial eruption of that volcano. When a molten lava rock was flung out of the volcano, rolled down Mount Marapi, and hit somebody. They were immediately killed. Seven other people from that volcanic eruption had to be evacuated off of the mountain. They were actually in the process of climbing Mount Merapi when the volcano erupted. Even though the agencies back then, earlier this year, had warned everyone to stay away from the volcano, there were still people that did hike up the side of the volcano. In this case, we don't believe that anyone was hiking around, around Mount Ruang. We hope not. Now, Indonesia is an archipelago of 270 million people. Indonesia has 120 active volcanoes. It is prone to volcanic activity because it sits along what? What does Indonesia sit on? The Southern Ring of Fire. The Southern Ring of Fire. The Southern Ring of Fire is a horseshoe-shaped series of seismic fault lines around the Pacific Ocean. The southern part of that fault line lies over in what we've told you is a seven tectonic plate area consisting of Australia, Indonesia, the Tongan and Samoa Islands, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands, the Loyalty Islands, um, New Caledonia, and even down to uh, southeastern New Zealand, that whole area. Indonesia has 120 volcanoes. Every one of those volcanoes is active. Usually on, at any one day, there are, are 7 to 10 volcanoes that are active and they are erupting 
On any one day, there's seven to 10 volcanoes in Indonesia alone that are erupting. I want to make that perfectly clear. People need to be aware of this. People need to be aware of this and take action to make sure they're not part of the problem. We need to make sure they are not part of the problem here. Okay? I want to make it clear. We do not want to have any more catastrophes of people that get hit by ejecta from the volcanoes. Now, the other day, the day before yesterday, we talked about the protesters here in the United States. What was happening? What was happening with those protesters? Those protesters were protesting over blocking bridges in New York. Blocking bridges over New York. One of them, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge, was blocked by what? People from over in Gaza. Palestinian people from Gaza that had run through our southern border. They're not legal. They're all illegals. These people have protested. They planned this. They plan protests all over the United States, and they're still doing it. The day before yesterday in the morning of Tuesday morning, they blocked bridges all over the United States. They blocked freeways and highways all over the United States. One such location was over at Chicago O'Hare International Airport. They blocked the roadway. People missed flights. People were late for flights. Or some people may have actually made it. But those protesters from Palestine or Palestine are here in the United States illegally. They also blocked another bridge. Those of you that have been watching this program know that I've talked about it. The San Francisco Bay Bridge. 35 protesters were arrested on the San Francisco Bay Bridge. Now, what do you think is happening with those protesters? Those protesters are still in jail. Right now, our U.S. Congress in Washington is trying to make it a felony, a federal issue a federal violation of law for anyone to block a thoroughfare, a highway, a freeway, a bridge. Make it a violation of federal law, which would make it illegal to do it, number one, a violation of federal law, but in doing so, anyone that does it, anyone that does it who's not a citizen of this country will be immediately deported back to their country of origin. That would be a good start, but that's just the beginning. That is just the beginning. Hundreds of illegal aliens, predominantly African and military aged people, gathered outside New York City Hall to protest the relocation from luxury hotels to shelters. <laughs> they had the audacity to go to the New York City Hall to protest New York City politicians revoking their occupancy of luxury hotels in New York City. They were also demanding that the New York City government pay them $15,000 a piece to be in New York. $15,000 a piece, because that is what Biden told them that they were going to get. Biden told those migrants, those illegal aliens, that they were promised one, green cards and work visas. They were promised $15,000 a piece on credit cards issued by our government, false promises. 
they demand better living conditions and the ability to work here in the United States. And right now they don't have that. United States companies here are demanding that those people have a green card that makes them eligible to work here in the United States and they don't have that. This situation highlights the challenges faced by immigrants, illegal aliens, and the cities where they're living. And the cities in managing influx of undocumented illegal migrants. Okay? It's a huge problem. It's a huge, huge problem. Now, I'm not suggesting I know any way that the cities and counties around this country can deal with this except for the deportation, the removal of these illegal aliens from here in the United States back to the countries where they came from. That's my solution. Is that going to happen? Probably not, at least not right now. Folks, it's going to happen. Things are already happening. Things are already happening. Now, something else that I want to talk about. Today, we've seen an increase in earthquakes. We've seen an increase in earthquakes around the world and an increase in earthquakes here in the Northern Hemisphere especially. We're going to talk about that. We've had an increase in earthquakes. What is causing some of these earthquakes? Number one, solar flares. My buddy Mark Wages, one of my best friends, has a video program called Wages World here on YouTube. I still highly respect him, and I would highly recommend that everyone after this program is over today goes over to Wages World and watches his program because Mark Wages is talking about these solar flares. Yesterday at the beginning of the program, I tried showing you pictures of the sun. Why? Because there were sunspots the day before yesterday and also yesterday and today continuing. We have three sunspots that are earth-facing. If those sunspots erupt, we're going to have plasma ejecta, plasma radiation from the sun headed to Earth. Yesterday, because of the ejecta that came out of the sun on Mon Sunday and Monday, that plasma radiation hit the Earth. And yes, it caused earthquakes. And we're going to continue to see these earthquakes happen as this plasma ejecta leaves the sun and goes through our magnetosphere down into our atmosphere and down into the ground, down into the crust of the earth that we walk on. What's going to happen? When that plasma radiation hits the, hits the earth, hits the ground that we walk on. The plasma radiation heats up the faults. The plasma radiation coming from the sun heats up the faults. It heats up the tectonic plates. What does that do? When it heats up those plates, all the crap and junk down there, the biological material, the dirt, the, the earth, the dust, or not dust because it's it's pretty wet down there, but all that dirt and grime and sand and rocks and all the biological material get heat gets heated up with that plasma radiation. In doing so, all that stuff turns into a greasy oil-like substance, making it easier for these earthquakes to happen. Making it, making it easier for the plates to move one over the other. That's what happens over in Indonesia. Seven different tectonic plates are moving down there in, southwest, in the southwestern Pacific, including New Zealand, 
well, I've already told you, New Zealand, Tonga, Samoa, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands, New Caledonia, the Loyalty Islands, um, the Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea, all of Indonesia, and Australia. Seven different tectonic plates are moving. All that plasma radiation coming from the sun is heating it up, making matters worse. That's why we're going to see continued earthquake activity. And in some cases, very large, very strong, and possibly major seismic activity happening. It's not out of the realm of possibility. This is what we're going to see. I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of this. Because it's your lives that we're trying to say or save. Kill, kill Griffin's here in the chat saying we're doomed. I don't believe we're doomed. I want to make that point perfectly clear. I do not believe we're doomed. However, we need to be able to react to what's going on. We need to be able to save our own lives. We need to be able to understand what's happening so when things happen, we know exactly what's going on. And we've made preparations to be ready for it happening. We've made preparations. That's what this channel is all about. Yes, that is exactly why we talk about earthquakes. We talk about disasters. We talk about illegal immigration because it's affecting each one of us all around the world, not just here in the United States. Every nation is having to put up with this illegal immigration. Politicians started it and it's going to continue for quite some time. Each of us is going to be affected by it. But like I said, we need to be aware of it so we can make plans to protect ourselves and our families. Okay? Shelly Dean's here in the chat says, yes, Ron, prepare. That is the biggest issue that I keep talking about. Emergency preparedness. This is a vital issue here. No other YouTube program ever talks about the disasters that are happening and the, the ability of all of us to prepare for what's going to happen and what is presently happening. Only Emergency Management Associates talks about this. Please, folks, please pay attention because we are going to continue to tell you what's happening so that you can prepare we're also going to teach you how to prepare and what you need to do to prepare and also protect your families and your children. Okay? We're going to teach you that. We've been doing this for over five years now. When I first started, there were a lot of people that goes, oh, he's just talking nonsense. No, I'm not. I'm not talking nonsense at all. I'm talking real, reality. I'm talking about reality, guys. Okay? Each one of us needs to accept that this is our reality. It's our reality, all of our reality. It's not just affecting me. It's affecting all of you worldwide. That's why this situation is almost dire. We need to be prepared and we need to do everything we can to make that happen. We need to do everything that we can to make it happen. Brokefish is one of my friends and he's here in the chat. He's one of our moderators on this channel. We have Brokefish, we have Demon Catman, we have Don Patoka. And we may have other moderators here as well. I'm just strolling back through here to see who we all have um, here in our chat. I have like five or six different moderators here. Linda Covington's here as well. She's one of our moderators. She's a friend of ours. 
Um, I don't see some of the other moderators we usually have here. They may come in here. But please, guys, please pay, please pay attention. Our moderators are here for a reason. They're trying to help you as I am trying to help you. I'm trying to help you understand what is happening because nobody else is going to do it. Do it. No, nobody else is going to do it. I'm trying to help you understand what's happening. This is absolutely necessary. It's absolutely necessary. And I'm going to do that. I am absolutely going to do this. I believe in this. I believe in this. I have been working in emergency preparedness for most of my life. Later, when I became a cop, which I was a cop for 24 years in law enforcement, I was also the emergency preparedness manager for our department. Before that, I spoke at large groups literally everywhere, teaching people how to prepare. I spoke into groups all around this country, trying to make sure we prepare everybody. We're still doing that. We're going to continue doing that because we've seen what happens when we teach people to prepare. We save lives. I've gotten mail and notes, email, and messages from people literally around the world thanking me for being here and teaching people how to prepare. We have major fault lines. Like I say, we have tectonic plates that are moving. Tonight, I'm going to primarily talk about volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. I'm not just going to talk about volcanoes, but I'm also going to talk about earthquakes that are happening in the Pacific Northwest, mainly because the USBS is not telling anybody. They're not telling people what's actually going on. And yet we have 2.5, 3.5, and 4.5 earthquakes happening in the Pacific Northwest, and all that USBS is saying, USGS, USBS is saying, they're showing one microquake at Mount Rainier. And I'm going to show you a lot more than that at Mount Rainier and every one of the volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest going from the northern border of Canada south into Cal Northern California. Earthquakes, volcanoes that are getting ready to erupt in the Pacific Northwest here in the United States. We talk about volcanoes all around the world. Tonight, I'm going to talk about volcanoes that are getting ready to erupt here in the United States. Why? Because we have a lot of people. We have millions of people that would be affected when the volcanoes erupt in the Pacific Northwest, millions of people. Hunter, I'm sorry your son died of cancer a couple years ago. Hunter is someone here in our chat. Folks, what I would like you to do is pay attention to what I'm saying here. Why? Why do you want to pay attention to what I'm saying? Because your lives are going to be affected by what's going on. Please pay attention to what I'm saying here tonight. Okay? Your lives may depend on you knowing what I'm saying. If you guys are talking about other things than what I am, when something happens, you're not going to understand what happens. And as a result, you're not going to be prepared. And as a result, you may get injured yourself or you may die as a result of you not paying attention. 
That is the biggest reason I ask people to pay attention to what we're saying. Not go off half-cocked and talk about other things. Well, I appreciate someone's family member, their brother, their sister, their father, their mother, their children dying. I appreciate that. I really do. But please, talk to me later. Send me a message. Send me a message. After this program is finished, I'm going to put up the ways you can contact me into our program description right below this video tonight. Within 15 minutes after we get through this pro, this this program that I'm telling you about tonight, I'm going to post the information where you can contact me. Emails and messaging. And how you can continue to support this program. Not just with Super Chats, but over to our PayPal locations. Where you can send us donations. But folks, please, please pay attention to what we're saying. The information we're giving you can save your lives. That's why we ask everyone to stay on topic. Please. This is for your well-being and ours. Okay? I don't teach these discussions for nothing. I teach them to save yourselves. To save yourselves. Sorry about that, guys. I hope that won't happen again. It's kind of embarrassing. When your camera falls, go boop. All of a sudden, you don't see me. Demon Catman just put up a way you can contact us. We appreciate that. Now, I'm continuing to see people's messages here being deleted. You're not paying attention to what I'm saying. You're not paying attention to what I'm saying. Munir's wrath, okay? This is very typical. Munir's wrath says, I'm pretty sure the supplies that everybody knows they need. No, they don't. People still are not paying attention. Munir, you might think everybody knows it. They don't. They don't know that. I'm sorry to say they don't. I'm almost embarrassed because... People are not paying attention. They're not. That's why we do this program every day. People are not paying attention. Now, I want to talk about what's going on. Because I believe that everybody needs the information. I've been doing it for a long time. I've been talking about what's been going on for a long time. I'm considered a subject matter expert. When I go to disaster drills around the United States, when I go to some place that calls me to talk about a specific topic, it's because I am known as a subject matter expert. That's why I'm asking everybody to please pay attention to what we're talking about. It could save your life. It could save your loved one's lives. Okay? My buddy Don Patokas here in the chat saying yesterday was how you're prepared for today. Or someone else doesn't miss important information. That's the other reason we want you to pay attention to what we're talking about. This is very important. This is very, very important information. Now, like I said, I'm going to start talking about volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest, up just south of the border of Canada. Okay? It's important. This is very, very important. I wouldn't say it is unless I believed it. I've been watching these volcanoes. I've been monitoring what they're doing. 
I've watched them. I see what's going on. Now, I'm going to show you a volcano called Mount Baker. Mount Baker is over in northern Washington, just south of the Canadian border. I want you to see this. Watch this. Look what's going on at Mount Baker here. Okay. The big blue lines on the left, the big red lines on the right, those are called abstract. They're trash. Those thicker lines here don't mean diddly squat. The agencies put those lines there for whatever reason. It doesn't mean anything. I promise you, these big, thick lines don't mean squat. They absolutely don't. But what does matter? Okay. It says S-H-U-K here at the top. This is the northern side of Mount Baker a volcano in Washington state up just south of the U.S.-Canadian border. What does make a difference is what you see near the bottom of this seismogram. Okay? Why? This information I'm providing to you happened at 9 a.m. this morning. It continued happening for about a half hour. See the black line here? This black line you are seeing is, you're seeing it all the way across the line here. See my cursor? It's over on the right-hand side. Each horizontal line here represents 15 minutes worth of activity. It doesn't show up here at the top of this seismogram it's supposed to start here at 1700 last night. That is 5 p.m. But you don't see anything, do you? That is because the agency eliminated the information. They deleted it. All you see are these thin horizontal lines that don't make anything any difference. These thicker lines don't mean a world of beans at all. They're trash. Why the agency put them there, I have no clue. But I've done my research, but those lines don't mean anything. But the lines down here at the bottom do. The black line is after 9 a.m. this morning. It ends over on the far right-hand side at 9.14 a.m. this morning. The, the red line that's just above it should be beneath it. But the red line starts at 9.15 a.m. this morning, and it continues over to the right until 9.29 a.m. this morning. There are no other lines that make any difference here, but these two lines are very important. Look at these earthquakes. Please look at these earthquakes. We have vertical lines on each, each or both of these horizontal lines. The vertical lines are earthquakes that are happening today. Earthquakes that happened this morning. This first black line is a 1.9 tremor. Tremors nobody feels. Tremors go from 1.0 to 1.9 tremors in magnitude. That second earthquake, this is completely different. You see that thick line here where you see my cursor? That means we had several earthquakes back to back. This particular earthquake strength was approximately a 2.8 earthquake. 2.8 minor earthquake. 2.0, 2.9 are minor earthquakes. Minor earthquakes most of the time cannot be felt except by, by very, very sensitive people. The next line is different. The next line here is different. See that one vertical line here? That is a 3.0 small earthquake. That was felt. 
Small earthquakes usually don't do any damage. However, those earthquakes are wake-up calls. Small, minor earthquakes are wake-up calls because that usually means that we're going to get larger earthquakes. Larger earthquakes. Over here to the right, on that same black line, we got more minor earthquakes. 2.0s. 1.5 tremors, 1.6, 1.8 tremors here. On the red line that was supposed to happen after this black line, over on the left-hand side, it starts off at 9.15 this morning. All we have here are tremor activity here. All we show here are tremor activity. But look at these thick red lines here. Down here, these red lines do make a difference, just uh, as if the black lines here that are thick as well make a difference. These thick lines show more magma coming through the magma chamber at Mount Baker. More and more magma coming into Mount Baker here. These red lines here that you see are very important. Increased amount of magma coming into Mount Baker. Magma is causing earthquakes. Increased magma in the volcanoes can cause earthquakes. Why? Because when the magma comes into the volcano, it fractures the rock. The magma is coming into the volcano, guys, and that increased magma coming in fractures the rock, causing earthquakes to that volcano. More and more magma could cause a volcano to erupt, and we're going to show that that is going to possibly happen at several volcanoes here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm putting out the warning voice because I am the only person on YouTube or anywhere else that is paying attention to these volcanoes. No one else is. No one else is talking about these volcanoes except me. No one else is talking about emergency preparedness and earthquakes and volcanoes and other activity except for me. It's quite unfortunate. Brokefish is here in the chat here just a minute ago talking about Crater Lake, Wizard Island over at Crater Lake in Oregon. Crater Lake is over in South Central Oregon. We're going to talk about Crater Lake in a few minutes. It's also very important. So please hang in here with me. Okay? Yes, we're seeing earthquakes here today at Mount Baker. On this red line, this is about 9.21 a.m. this morning where you see my cursor here. These earthquakes are 2.5 earthquakes, minor earthquakes, but there's a lot of them here, isn't it? Nearly one minute, 60 seconds of earthquakes hitting. Now, these minor earthquakes, for the most part, are not being felt. However, we're going to show you tonight where there is earthquake activity happening that is going to be felt or has been felt. Why? Because this earthquake activity is increasing. That's why it's important to understand what's going on. Well, here's Rath is asking, how old is Mount Baker? It's very old, probably several thousand years old but it doesn't necessarily matter how old it is. Mount Baker has erupted in the past, and it's going to erupt again. Mount Baker is going to erupt again. Now, I want to show you another seismogram here. Okay, this is also Mount Baker. This particular seismogram says Shuxan at the top. SHUK is an abbreviation for Shuxan. 
Shuxum is Shuxon is a ski resort on the north side of Mount Baker. That's number one. Over on the right hand side, it says HHN. HHN is a channel on a seismograph. This particular seismograph that's recording this information is a multi channel seismograph. It has five to six different channels. The seismograph is programmed to give us different information. This particular seismogram is showing us the magma coming into Mount Baker. These wavy lines that you see here is indicative of magma coming into the volcano. Up at the top, you, do, you don't see a lot of wavy lines here at the top. <clears throat> Let me get a drink of water here. You don't see a lot of wavy lines up at the top. But the wavy lines increase throughout the day today. The top of this seismogram starts at 1,700 hours last night. 5 p.m. last night in the Pacific Coast area. 5 p.m. Pacific time yesterday evening. You don't see too much going on here. Very, These wavy lines are very calm right now, meaning last night not a lot was going on and the magma was not coming in at a huge rate last night. But as you can see by this seismogram, as we go throughout last, last night after 5 p.m. last night, and throughout the night and early morning hours here, you see an increase in seismic activity. You see an increase in the magma coming into the Mount Baker here. Look what happened after 8 a.m. this morning. Look at all that wavy activity here. These are called VLF waves. The VLF waves are caused by magma entering Mount Baker. Look at all this activity here. What we saw in that last seismogram that I showed you was not indicative of all this activity here. Meaning the agency scrubbed the activity. The agency only showed us a little bit of activity, meaning seismic activity, earthquakes happening at Mount Baker. This activity that I'm showing you right here would be indicative of 3.0 earthquakes. 3.0 earthquakes, this activity here. But the agency has scrubbed the data. People are feeling earthquakes at Mount Baker in northern Washington. They're feeling it. Adventuring Mike is here in the chat, just gave us a $5 super chat, which I greatly appreciate. Thank you so much for contributing to our channel. Your people that contribute to Super Chats or send us money over on PayPal or send us money, donations to our post office box, keep this channel on the air. It's quite expensive to operate a YouTube or a Rumble channel. It takes time. It takes equipment. It takes equipment. We're showing you what's going on. Mike, thanks so much. He says, doing a great job at getting all the info out. Thanks for all you do. Stay safe and stay aware, y'all. Then he says 100% give us two thumbs up. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for your support and caring. That also make, means a world of difference to me and my family. Not only do I put in my time and get the equipment necessary to show you what's going on, but my family does not have my full attention when I'm paying attention to what I'm showing you now. I spent hours during the day gathering information, political information, seismic information, I gather information from all kinds of ways 
all kinds of places to show you what's going on, to help save your lives. What I'm showing you here on this seismogram would be indicative of larger earthquake activity than I just showed you because the agency scrubbed the information. That's what really happened here at Mount Baker, unfortunately. Again, this agency, the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, and the United States Geological Survey working together are lying to us. They're lying. These earthquakes that you're seeing here on this seismogram, these should have been probably a 3.0, 3.5 earthquake. People feeling these. Mount Baker at some point in time is going to erupt. That's what's really happening here. Everyone needs to be aware. You need to be prepared, EMA family. I care about you. Each one of the people that are here in our chat, each one of the people that are on this program watching our program tonight should know that we care about you. We have a lot of people from the Pacific Northwest that rely on this information. Well, here's Rath says criminals. Absolutely. The agency is not showing the information. They're scrubbing it. They don't want people to know what's going on. Heaven forbid. It's going to cost people their lives. Now, I'm going to show you a volcano just south of Mount Baker. This is called Glacier Peak. Glacier Peak Volcano. Now, it's not showing much of any activity at all, unfortunately. Right up here, where you see my cursor here, all we're seeing here is a very minor tremor. A minor tremor late last night, after 10 p.m. Prior to that, there was a very tiny tremor last night after 7.30 probably closer to 740 tiny tremors. Now, what is this here over on the far right? Over here on the far right is what we call a magma churn signal. A magma churn signal. Magma churn signals typically are supposed to be 23 to 24 lines tall. Let's count the number of lines here. The number of lines is going to be indicative of the amount of coverage that this seismogram is really giving us, okay? I'll explain this more. Let's count these lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 lines high. This particular seismogram is only showing us approximately 64% of real world. 64% of real world. Because this magma churn signal is not showing us 24 or 23 to 24 lines high. It's only showing us 14 lines high. So it's basically just showing us about 64% of real world. All the information here on the seismogram is only 64% of the real world of what is exactly what is exactly happening here at Glacier Peak Volcano. Glacier Peak Volcano is a very active volcano. The USBS and the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, where I got this seismogram here that I'm showing you, they've scrubbed it. They have scrubbed it. Someone turned down the seismograph here. Someone turned down the seismogram here, or seismograph. That's why this 
magma churn signal is not showing us 24 lines high, only 14. They turn down the seismograph. They don't want anybody to see exactly what's going on here. Okay, these lines out to the right here. Let me zoom in here. These lines out here to the right are steam signals. Glacier Peak in Washington State is steaming. If someone was taking a look at Mount or Glacier Peak here, they would see steam clouds coming from the volcano. Steam clouds coming from the volcano. Okay? It's steaming. Just because the volcano steams doesn't make doesn't mean it's going to erupt anytime soon. But if we look at these seismograms and we see earthquakes here and we see a magma churn signal where we can prove that the agency turned down the seismograph, not showing us real data, that is very, very dangerous. And yet these agencies do it all the time. The agencies do it all the time. Now, I want to show you another um, particular seismogram. This is at Grays Harbor, Washington. Grays Harbor, Washington. Look at this information here on this seismogram. Look at the earthquakes and the tremors happening here. This is a very busy seismogram here. Grays Harbor, Washington. This is along the coast of Washington. Okay? USGS is not showing any of this on their map. None of it. None of it. Look at these earthquakes up here towards the top. Again, all this activity here happened last night before midnight. Right here where all this activity starts here, where it gets bigger, is midnight last night. So everything from 5 p.m. at the top line here until midnight is small activity, minor activity. Yes, we're having this, for example, right here. This line right here is showing us a 2.9, 3.0 earthquake, small earthquake. Small earthquake. This is right here a 2.0 earthquake, a minor earthquake here. Over here on the right, folks, this earthquake happened at 9.15 last night. This is also a 2.0 earthquake, but it's back to back to back. The earthquake actually lasted about 10 seconds. How would you like to be in an earthquake that lasts 10 seconds or lasts 30 seconds or lasts five minutes? Last night, we showed you seismic activity lasting long periods of time. I personally have been in earthquakes that have lasted several minutes long, 10 to 15 minutes long, large earthquakes shaking the ground. Let's go down here to after midnight. See this black line here? This black line here going to the right, over on the left-hand side, it starts at midnight. Over on the right-hand side here, all the way over here to the right, this would be here 12, 14 a.m. this morning. Then we go over here. This blue line would be 12.30 a.m. over here on the left-hand side. Then we come over here. Approximately 12.04 a.m. this morning. I'm sorry, 12.34 a.m. this morning. The blue line over on the left-hand side is 12.30 a.m. Over here, this is approximately 12.34 a.m. this morning. Look at that. This is a 3.0 earthquake right here. This earthquake right next to it to the right 
is a 3.23.3, increased seismicity, increased earthquake power. While it's still a small earthquake, it's increasing in size. The earthquake here to the right is also approximately a 3.3, 3.4 earthquake. This one right next to it is less than that. This is a 3.0 earthquake here. This earthquake to the right of there is another 3.3 earthquake. Small earthquake. Look here on this line here. See these thicker lines here? These thicker lines are caused by magma that's coming in along the coast from the Pacific Ocean. Magma going through magma tunnels in the Pacific Ocean coming over here on land. That's why these blue, this particular blue line is thicker here. These earthquakes are caused by magma here in Washington State. That's what's happening. These earthquakes and seismic activity here, these vertical lines, are caused by magma here. Rock fracturing. You see these thinner lines. Less and less magma. And you see these tiny vertical lines. Those are just microquakes. Microquakes. When we have microquakes, that usually means we're going to have tremors after that. When we have a great deal of microquakes, usually it means we're going to have tremors, which is an upgrade from a microquake. And tremors lead to minor earthquakes. Minor earthquakes lead to larger, smaller quakes. Smaller quakes lead to moderate quakes. Moderate quakes lead to larger quakes. Larger quakes can do a lot of damage. Even a 4.5 moderate quake can do a lot of damage. A large quake can kill people. And we've shown that to happen. This is along the coast of Washington, guys. USGS is not talking about any of this. They're not showing any seismic activity at all along the coast of Washington or Oregon or California. Very little seismic activity along the coastline. But there is. There is very much a lot of activity going on. I want to talk now about a place called Orcas Island, East Sound Washington State. Orcas Island is an island along the coast of Washington. Okay? The Puget Sound area. The Strait of Juan de Fuca, for those of you that live in Washington, you know where that is. Look at these earthquakes yesterday evening. Starting off here at 5 p.m. All we had here you see here are microquakes and tremors on this red line here. However, if we wanted to know what happened before 5 p.m., we would pull the seismogram from yesterday because the seismogram from yesterday ended at 4.59 p.m. Today's seismogram started off at 5 p.m., 1,700 hours. Where you see here on this black line, 5 p.m. These are minor earthquakes. 2.0 earthquake, 2.0 earthquake, 2.0 earthquake. These are just tremors here on the black line. Then I come further down here. This is after 7 p.m. 1,900 hours here on the black line is 7 p.m. 7 p.m. here. Over here, this is 7.06, 7.07 p.m. yesterday evening. This is a 3.0 small quake. 3.0 small earthquake. 
The red line comes after that should have been 715. We see a 2.0 earthquake here about a minute and a half after that. Okay? Approximately 7.16 p.m., a 2.0 minor earthquake. Then over here on the right, again, we're seeing another 2.2, 2.3 earthquake right here, where you see my cursor here on the right. What happened after 8 p.m.? I'm now pointing to an earthquake here. This is a 3.5, 3.6 earthquake here. This earthquake happened just before 8.01 p.m. yesterday evening. Okay? This is considerable. This earthquake was most definitely felt by anyone up along the coastline of Washington. A 3.5 earthquake that was felt. It probably didn't do a lot of damage. These small 3.0, 3.9 earthquakes don't do much damage, but they are felt. Small earthquakes are felt. 4.0 to 4.9 cause moderate damage. 5.0 to 5.9 cause substantial large damage. Okay? What you're seeing here, that is a 3.5 earthquake. These other earthquakes are, this one is a tremor. This one is a 2.0, 2.1 earthquake, minor earthquake. That is a tremor. This is a tremor here. This here is caused by magma here. This is increased activity. Increased magma activity here and over here on the red line that's supposed to be after this. Now, look here. Nothing after 2,200 hours. Actually, nothing after 7.30 last night. Why? Why are they not showing any activity? They turned off the seismograph. They turned off the seismograph here. So between 7.30 last night and 5.30 this morning, there is no activity showing. None. None. Each one of these lines here are solid, tiny lines, meaning the seismograph was off. The seismograph was off. Nothing showing. Heaven forbid they're honest with us. What happened when the seismograph was off? What happened? Or what happens when they turn down the seismograph and it doesn't report accurate information? What happens? Let's look at this earthquake right here. This appears to be a tremor. Just suppose that this seismograph had been turned way down. And this was actually a 3.5 earthquake. Or these tremors were actually 3.5 earthquakes. Think about that. Think about that. This red line here is thicker. It's thinner here. This is called magma pulse activity. When the line is thicker or thinner, let's take, for example, over here. Over here on this red line, the magma is coming into the volcanic chamber here. No, there's no volcano here. But there is a magma tunnel. Magma is coming in here, a lot of magma. And it gets thinner, less magma. Then it gets thicker again, more magma. Those are called magma pulse signals here. Magma pulse signals here. It doesn't matter whether it's on a red, blue, or, or a green, or a black line. The black lines are the top of the hour. The red lines are 15 minutes past the hour. The blue lines are 30 minutes past the hour. The green lines, and you don't see much green line here, but green lines are 45 minutes past the hour on the left-hand side. Each line is 15 minutes long. Okay? Again, they're not saying anything. 
they're not letting anybody know exactly what's going on. <clears throat> Adventuring Mike is asking a great question in the chat. Where is the accountability? Where is the accountability? There is none. The seismograph is owned by the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, the University of Washington. The seismologists should have their hands slapped. And maybe some of the big seismologists, the ones who've been there for a long time, should be fired because they are the ones that are telling the other seismologists or employees of the agency to turn the seismographs down. It's the managers that are telling the other people at the agency to turn the seismographs down. Why? Because the managers of the agency, both the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network and the USGS, politicians are telling them, turn it down. Don't tell anybody what exactly is going on because the politicians want to remain in control. If there's people that know what's exactly going on or they start feeling earthquakes and become concerned, they're going to move away. And these people are feeling these earthquakes. People felt that earthquake. People felt that earthquake. They may have been feeling these other earthquakes because if this seismograph was turned way down, this may have been a large earthquake. This one here may have been a large earthquake as well. Once people start feeling larger earthquakes, they move away. If people are seeing this, oh, this doesn't mean much, this is just a tremor, or this is just a minor earthquake. What they don't know is the agencies are turning the seismographs down. Re the recording instruments are turned down, so they're not putting out accurate information. People are going to die. People are going to die because they're not getting the accurate information. All they're seeing is all these tremors here, minor earthquakes. This earthquake here, look at that red line here. Look at that red line here. This is a 2.5, 2.8 earthquake right here. This earthquake is a 2.3, 2.4 earthquake right here. But I know for a fact what I'm talking about. I've seen it. I've been watching it. Now, one of our people here in the chat is a man named Total Vagabonds. He is from Ireland here. Total Vagabonds is from Ireland. We really appreciate him being here. He doesn't get here enough. I would love to see him like he used to be here every night. He's a good man over in Ireland. One of our men here, one of our moderators here, his name is Demon Catman. Guess where he lives? In the east of England. Did you know over in England yesterday there was a 3.0 small earthquake? USGS didn't show it. I went over to the Seismology Institute of Great Britain and I found the earthquake. Again, the agencies don't want to report those. The general public doesn't find those. The general public doesn't find them. Just like here, the general public isn't seeing this, are they? The only people that are seeing it are people on this program. That's why I want to make sure that all of you are seeing what's going on. Because the people in the Pacific Northwest don't know this. They are not seeing this information. They are not seeing the information. 
Folks, this is happening. It's happening on your dime. It's happening on your dime. You guys are the ones that are not seeing this. And you and your families are the ones that are going to suffer because they're not showing this. Another place, Willapa Harbor, Washington. Look at these earthquakes here. Willapa Harbor, Washington right here. Up at the top. Look at the thicker lines here. It starts off thinner over here on the left-hand side and gets thicker here. Meaning more and more magma coming in from the Pacific Ocean through magma tunnels headed to volcanoes. Willapa Harbor, Washington. Look at the tremors here. There are microquakes and tremors here. This appears to be a 1.8, 1.9 tremor. This is probably a 1.4, 1.5 tremor here. Look down here. Suddenly at 4.30 a.m. this morning, 4.30 a.m. over here, this is about 4.07, 4.08 a.m. this morning. This is a 1.5, 1.6 tremor here on the blue line. What about this here? What about this here? This is on the red line after 5.15 a.m. this morning. All we have here are tremors here. Then all of a sudden we get more magma here, don't we? This is indicative of more magma coming in to the magma tunnel here. This is along the coast of Washington, Willaba Harbor, Washington. Look at this earthquake here, a 2.0 earthquake here, a 1.5 tremor before that here. Look at these other tremors and microquakes here, down here. This is about 10... 41 a.m. this morning, this red line here. Folks, that is a 3.0 earthquake. This red line here is a 3.0 earthquake, small earthquake. People in Wallapa Harbor, Washington felt that quake. Now, while there are other tremors and microquakes here, that earthquake was felt. People thought, might have thought, well, a, tra a truck just rumbled by. Maybe it was a truck that, that made the ground shake. No, it didn't. There was an earthquake 3.0 this morning. Willaba Harbor, Washington. USGS is not saying word one about it. Absolutely nothing being said. Let's go over to the volcanoes. Let's go over to volcanoes. I want to take you to Mount Rainier now. Good old Mount Rainier. Okay, this is Camp Sherman. Camp Sherman is over on the north side of Mount Rainier, near the rim of the volcano. You're not seeing much activity here. You're not seeing much of activity. Again, this started at 5 p.m. yesterday afternoon. All you're seeing is microquake activity. There's a 2.0 earthquake right here. Okay. This was after 7, I want to say 720 um about 7.20 p.m. last night. Just a 2.0 earthquake, minor earthquake. Here's another one. This is a 2.3, 2.5 earthquake here. How about right here? This is a 2.3 earthquake here. Folks, this is a volcano. If we have a vertical line without a dot in the middle of it, that is indicative of a steam signal. This is a steam signal. 
Mount Rainier is steaming. Okay. If you see any vertical line without a dot in the middle of it, it's a steam signal. If you come over here, for example, folks, this is a 3.0 earthquake. A vertical line with a large dot in it, a 3.0 earthquake today, this morning. Actually, I'm sorry, it wasn't this morning. It was late last night. About 10.56 p.m. last night, right here a 3.0 earthquake at Mount Rainier. These are tremors here. This is another 3.0 earthquake right here. Again, it's a long vertical line with a dot in the middle of it, a 3.0 earthquake. Tremor, I'm sorry, not tremor. This is a steam signal here. You see many steam signals here. This over here is an earthquake. This is a 2.2, 2.3 earthquake here. Now, I'm coming down here. Why am I showing you this? This is another magma churn signal. What did we learn about magma churn signals on that other seismogram? The length of the magma churn signal is indicative of measuring the amount of energy that the seismograph is going to allow us to see. Okay? Again, magma churn signals are typically 23 to 24 lines high. How high is this one? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 lines high. 8 lines high. This particular seismogram at Mount Rainier here See, it says RCS, Mount Rainier, Camp Sherman. That's what RCS means. This magma churn signal is telling us that the seismologists have turned these, this seismograph down to about 40% of real world. 40% of real world. So everything here can be multiplied. I told you this was a 3.0 earthquake. Guess what? This may have actually been a 4.0 moderate earthquake. A 4.0 moderate earthquake, not a 3.0. They're not being honest with us. How about this earthquake here? If we just looked at it for what it is, we would say this is probably a 2.2, or excuse me, a 3.2, 3.3 earthquake. Guess what? This earthquake may have been a 4.0 as well. This earthquake may have been a 4.0 moderate earthquake, not a small earthquake. Because over here, we know exactly how strong this seismograph is telling us. It is. It's been turned down to only show us 40% of the real world. Again, these lines off to the right are showing steam being released by Mount Rainier. The big, huge magma plug at the top of the volcano is only allowing steam to escape. Steam to escape. Another evening, I will show you what I'm talking about, where the, the lava plug at the top of the volcano is only allowing steam to escape, and I'll show you why. I'm not going to get into that tonight. But again, this is at Mount Rainier. My wife is here. Polly saw my wife Carol here. Yes, my wife does monitor this channel. She's downstairs with our dogs monitoring this channel. Welcome, Carol. I love you, sweetheart. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you also being here watching our program. Again, that is Mount Rainier, Camp Sherman. What have we learned? Earthquakes happening at a major volcano. How about this one? This is also Mount Rainier. This time, Camp Muir. RCM is Camp Muir at Mount Rainier. What are we here looking at? 
over here. This is on the blue line. Over on the left-hand side, it would be 8, I mean, 930 here on the blue line here. Over here, this is a 2.3, 2.4 earthquake. 2.3, 2.4 earthquake here. We come over here. Look at this. Over here on the left-hand side, this would be 1115 over here. The red lines are the 15-minute lines, okay? 23 would be 11 p.m. This red line is after 11.15. We come over here. This is, again, a 1.9, 2.0 earthquake. 1.9 tremor, 2.0 earthquake. Whenever I see something like this, I have to round it up because the agency has not been honest, honest with us. If they say there was a 1.9 tremor, the agency not being honest, we know that the agency downgrades everything. If it was a 2.0 or 2.1 earthquake, guess what? The agency would downgrade to 1.9. That's a fact. You can take that to the bank. Look at this. Look at all this seismic activity here, these seismic waves. Guess what? Indonesia last night. Indonesia last night. What do we have? We had a 5.8 earthquake in Indonesia last night. That's what all this is. That is exactly what this is. Over here, again, over on this left-hand side, this is 1115. This blue line is above that, meaning over here, this is actually 10.56 p.m. last night. I'm sorry, not that, 10.46 p.m. 10.46 p.m. right here. This appears to be a 2.5, 2.7 earthquake, minor earthquake. At Mount Rainier, Camp Muir. This time, Camp Muir is on the south side of Mount Rainier. Okay? Again, all this activity here is from Indonesia last night. Earthquakes in Indonesia last night. All this here. What do we have over here? This earthquake here is like a 2.0 earthquake. This earthquake happened after, this earthquake in the black here happened after 8 a.m. this morning. Over here on the right-hand side, this is 8 a.m. All this activity here happened in Indonesia. Okay? That is a 2.0 earthquake. How about this one here? This would typically be a 3.3 .3 earthquake. We do not have a magma churn signal to understand that this seismogram has been turned down. It probably was. Judging by the one at Camp Sherman on the north side, it would only make sense that the agencies turn this one down as well. This appears to be a 3.3, 3.5 earthquake here. Again, an earthquake that can be felt. But if they've turned this seismic, this, this seismograph down, this may have been as much as a 4.0 earthquake, maybe a little bit larger. Again, why are we seeing all this large seismic activity? Because Mount Rainier is about to erupt. We've been watching Mount Rainier for a very long time. When we see 4.0 earthquakes, and yes, we have, we've seen 3.0, 3.5s consistently happening every day at Mount Rainier. Multiple seismograms. Multiple seismograms around the volcano. Typically, there are 10 seismographs all around each of the volcanoes. The only one where it doesn't happen is Glacier Peak, where there's only one seismograph that is monitoring Glacier Peak. There were supposed to be five other seismographs added to Glacier Peak, but guess what? 
they apparently haven't because we're not seeing the information showing up on the reports. Again, this is Mount Rainier. When we see consistent activity like this, consistent earthquake activity, 3.03.5s every day, or 3.0 to 4.5 earthquakes every day, it's consistent to believe that Mount Rainier is getting ready to erupt. Mount Rainier is getting ready to erupt, guys. We see it. Every day we see it. Now, I want to show you another seismogram. This also comes from Mount Rainier on the south side of the volcano. This particular case, this seismograph is located on the southern side of Mount Rainier, RER. Mount Rainier on the, the first letter here. ER signifies Emerald Ridge. Emerald Ridge is part of the way down the south side of Mount Rainier. This particular seismograph is showing us these VF waves caused by magma coming into Mount Rainier in this case. Look at all this, this activity here. This is indicative of a lot of magma coming into Mount Rainier under pressure. Coming into Mount Rainier under pressure. The top of this seismogram starts off at 5 p.m. yesterday evening. So between 5 and 7 p.m., we have a great deal of magma coming into Mount Rainier, and it's coming in under pressure, causing earthquakes. What did we see on the other seismograms? Very few earthquakes, which means the agency has scrubbed the seismic activity off. The, other, the agency has scrubbed the other seismograms off. They're not reporting the earthquakes. This would be indicative of 3.0, 3.5 earthquakes. Look at that. That is a great deal of VLF wave activity. Very low frequency wave activity caused by magma coming into the volcano. Then it calms down for a little while. Look at this. It calms down for several hours. Then it starts up again. Then it starts up again. It starts happening after 11 p.m. last night. Look at this. The magma activity really kicks into high gear after 11 p.m. last night. And it continues until today, this afternoon. Look at this. This is 1.15, 1.30 this afternoon. Look at all this activity. Magma coming into the magma chamber at Mount Rainier. A lot of it. Meaning we should have seen a lot of 3.0 activity. Continuing, not just one or two 3.0 small, small earthquakes. This kind of activity could have caused, especially right in here, Look at this, right in here. This kind of activity could have caused a 4.0 moderate earthquake. 4.0 moderate earthquake. We've seen it happen before. I've shown it here on the program in the past few months. We've seen moderate earthquakes happening at Mount Rainier. Like I said, the seismologist may have turned this seismograph down because they're not showing all the earthquakes here, but we're seeing it here on this particular seismogram. Anytime you see an HHE or an HHN seismograph, or I mean seismogram, what you're seeing is volcanic activity. Magma coming into the magma chamber. Magma coming into the magma chamber. That's what you're seeing here at Mount Rainier. Let's jump down for time-wise. Let's jump down to another volcano. What volcano do you think we're going to show you? How about Mount St. Helens? Good old Mount St. Helens. First off, let's go over here. 
this seismogram here is at Studebaker Ridge over on the north side of Mount St. Helens. Look at all this. This is a separate seismogram, guys. All this activity here, we don't see really, really thick lines here, meaning there's a little bit of magma coming into Mount Rainier right here. I mean, not Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens. You see tremors here. All this activity, these vertical lines here, look to be tremors here. The same thing with here. Microquakes and tremors here. It ramps up here. Look at all this. Now we're talking 2.0 to 2.5, 2.8 earthquakes. Minor earthquakes. Each and every line here. Each and every line. Red lines, black lines, blue lines, red lines, blue lines again. Black lines. Right here, we're seeing microquakes and tremors here. More tremors here. Look at that. More tremors here. Mount St. Helens, guys. Mount St. Helens. Now I'm going to show you something else. This particular seismogram that I'm going to show you now shows magma coming into the volcano. September lobe. SEP is September lobe. BDFCC01 is the, sig the seismograph channel at Mount St. Helens showing the VF waves caused by magma coming into the volcano here. They're not showing much of anything here. Basically, they turned the seismograph way, way down here. So it's not recording anything. After 10 p.m. right here, guess what? All of a sudden, the magma activity coming into Mount St. Helens is getting bigger. Then they turn the seismograph down again. How do I know they turn it down? Because magma activity like this doesn't just go down immediately. It doesn't immediately just go down. It gets less, but it doesn't go down. We hardly see any vertical or VLF waves here at all. None. Then all of a sudden they turn it back up. We see a gradual increase in, in these VLF wave activity here, meaning they turned it up. Then they turned it up here because they wanted to know what's going on here at Mount St. Helens. Look at all this. Folks, this started turning up at 2 a.m. this morning, right here. 2 a.m., where do you see my cursor here? Guess what? All the way down here to this afternoon. All the way down here to this afternoon. This is 1 p.m. this afternoon. All this activity here should show 2.5, 3.0, and 4.0 activity here at Mount St. Helens. But it's not. It's not. They're not letting us see what exactly is happening at Mount St. Helens. They don't want to show us. They don't want to show us. So I have shown you seismograms here, even at Mount Rainier. I showed you Studebaker Ridge. That's on the north side of Mount St. Helens. 2.0 earthquakes. It was probably larger than that. The seismograph again was turned down. Let me show you Mount Hood. Let me show you Mount Hood. I want to show you what's going on at Mount Hood. Look at this. This, folks, is Timberline on the southern side of Mount Hood, on the lower southern part of Mount Hood. Timberline is located, the seismograph is located at government camp on the lower southern side of Mount Hood. 
This is a BHN seismogram showing magma coming into Mount Hood. We see some VOF waves here. We, saw, we see some vertical lines here or horizontal lines here that are moving around, meaning magma coming into the volcano. We see earthquakes here. This particular seismograph is showing us earthquakes at Mount Hood. This earthquake here is a 3.0 earthquake. It was preceded by tremors and a 2.0, 2.2 earthquake here and a 3.0 earthquake here. Then out to the right-hand side. See this here out to the right-hand side of that earthquake? This is called a secondary wave here. A secondary wave. The secondary wave indicates the real magnitude of this earthquake. This secondary wave lasted nearly a full minute. This appears to be a 3.0 earthquake. This may have been as much as a 3.5 or larger earthquake because of this secondary wave like this going out to the right. Here we have a 2.8 earthquake here. Another 2.7, 2.8 earthquake here. Again, we have magma moving here on this blue line. Magma moving into Mount Hood. Here as well. Magma moving into Mount Hood. And you can see tremors happening here. This is a piece of magma coming into Mount Hood right here. Okay? A larger piece of magma coming into Mount Hood and it's causing these vertical lines here, meaning that larger piece of magma here inside Mount Hood caused rock fracturing here at Mount Hood. Incredible. Here, here we have 2.0, 2.2 earthquakes here. A sequence. This sequence lasted about a minute and a half here. And again, these waves here, these vertical waves, VLF waves here, VLF waves here on this black line here as well. Magma coming into Mount Hood. Now, the magma is not coming into Mount Hood like it was at Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. That is because those, both of those volcanoes are about to erupt. They're showing signs of a possible imminent eruption at those locations. That means northern Washington is going to see an eruption. We don't know how or when. But we've shown you over the past few months earthquakes happening at the, both of those volcanoes indicative of a volcano about to erupt. That's a fact. That's a fact. Now, I had more earthquake activity at other volcanoes in Oregon as well. I had more activity in Oregon. Now, I'm going to see if I've got some of that activity here at Clear Lake Volcano. Where is it? Crud, crud, crud. I had it here. Rainier, Orcas Island. Here's, here's Mount Constitution. Mount Constitution is 40 miles south and west of Mount Baker. Look at this. Look at this. Earthquake activity happening in an, at another volcano. These thicker lines here. Magma coming into Mount Constitution. Minor earthquakes happening right here. Minor earthquakes. Earthquakes happening here at Mount Constitution, 40 miles southwest of Mount Baker. Happening. Now, I can't believe that the information I gave that I was going to give you at Clear Lake Volcano in South Central Oregon didn't show up. 
Let me pull it here. I think I can show it to you here. Okay. I just typed in CLCB. CLCB is the code for Clear Lake Volcano Cleetwood Cove. Clear Lake Volcano Cleetwood Cove. This is it. This is what's going on right now. After 5 p.m. today. 5 p.m. today. Look at this seismic activity here. Look at the earthquakes here. It's more than just 2.0 earthquakes. This here is a 3.0 earthquake, if I could even say so myself. It may have been even larger earthquake at Cleetwood Cove Crater Lake. Let's take this back to yesterday and today's seismogram at Crater Lake. It's loading right here. That's why you see that wheel here. This is also Pacific Northwest Seismic Network seismogram. Look here. Hardly any activity here at all. Nothing. Nothing. We're seeing some tremors here. Some very tiny tremors. We're seeing the earthquake in Indonesia um, last night here. Right there. Look at this. Another earthquake here early this morning. Nothing but tremors here at Crater Lake. What a crap job this is. I'm bringing up another seismograph that's over on the southern side of Crater Lake. It's called CLBH, Crater Lake Bunkhouse. Yes, there is a bunkhouse over on the south middle side of Crater Lake, an actual bunkhouse. Look at this. Look at this. Solid white, solid lines here. Solid black, red, blue, and green lines here. Nothing going on because they turned off the seismograph. They turned off the seismograph here at Crater Lake Bunkhouse. Look here. See this black line here? This is after 7 a.m. this morning. It's a thicker line here, isn't it? Indicative of magma coming into this volcano, Crater Lake. Then it gets thinner here. You see these vertical lines? These are earthquakes caused by the magma coming into Crater Lake, the volcano. All these are microquakes and tremors here. This earthquake here may have been a 1.8, 1.9 tremor. The same thing here. Okay. However, right here, this is at least a 2.0, 2.2, 2.3 earthquake. Crater Lake. Down here. Look at all this activity down here. Folks, this is this blue line is after 2.30 this afternoon. 1,400 would be 2 o'clock on this black line here. The blue line is indicative of 2.30 over here. We come over to just before 2.04 this afternoon. This is Pacific time. Crater Lake, Oregon, South Central Oregon. This is a 3.0, 3.4 earthquake. This is a 3.0, 3.4 earthquake right here. Crater Lake is a huge volcano over here in south central Oregon. They call it Crater Lake because at the top of the, of the volcano, there's a huge alpine lake. Hundreds of feet deep. Meaning the last time Crater Lake erupted, it left a floor inside the crater rim. It's called a caldera. The lava solidified. It, it hardened. Over the years, a water table moved in and left water at the top of Crater Lake, at the top of the volcano of the caldera. And not just that. Rain and snow came into this caldera and filled that lake. 
several hundred feet deep. What is going to happen when this volcano erupts again? Hot lava, very hot lava, 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit hitting that cold water. There's going to be a catastrophic volcano eruption here. Hot lava that's going to erupt violently, very violently. And this volcano, guys, right here, this is a good-sized earthquake. While being a small earthquake, it's still a good-sized earthquake, considering it's at a volcano. And the magma coming into this volcano is causing this earthquake. That's what's really going on in Washington and Oregon. Tomorrow, I'm going to finish up this program by showing you seismograms coming from volcanoes in Northern California, Mount Shasta and Mount Lassen, and they're larger than 3.0. Earthquakes hitting Mount Shasta and Mount Lassen are larger than a 3.0 earthquake. Fact, you can take that to the bank. And tomorrow night, we're going to show you those earthquakes. We're going to show you what's actually going on. Okay? I promise you we're going to show you exactly what's happening. Do any of you have any questions about anything we've talked about tonight? Eli Earth says, hope it won't affect Salem where I'm in in Oregon. It could. It could very much affect you in Salem, Oregon. Fact fact. I don't want to burst somebody's bubble, but everybody in Washington and Oregon are going to be affected when these volcanoes erupt. And there's not just one or two volcanoes. There's not just one or two volcanoes in Oregon, for example. Let's talk about some volcanoes there. There's Mount Hood that we talked about last tonight. South of Mount Hood. There's at least 20 other volcanoes south of Mount Hood. Belknap Crater, Newberry Volcano, Sisters Volcano, Bachelor Volcano. Two volcanoes at Sisters, or actually three. Three volcanoes at Sisters Volcanoes. There's three of them. Sisters North, Sisters Central, and Sisters South and a lot of other volcanoes. We've only talked about a handful of them. There are a lot of volcanoes over in Oregon. There's more volcanoes in California as well. The major volcanoes in Northern California are Mount Shasta and Mount Lassen. You need to know about it because Mount Lassen is getting ready to erupt again. The last time Mount Lassen erupted, it was in 1917. It's getting ready to erupt again. Fact. I can prove it. The agency doesn't want to tell you. Heaven forbid they tell you. Heaven forbid they be honest with you. Honest with me. Honest with all of us. Heaven forbid. It's not happening. It hasn't happened. It hasn't happened in a long time. Yeah, I get exasperated. I'm sorry, I do. Eventually, Mike says it's getting to might be my bedtime. Got to be up early in the morning. You all have a great night. You too, Mike. We appreciate it. We appreciate you, your support of our program with your super chat. God bless you for that. God bless all of you who give us super chats or what they call super thanks here on YouTube. We greatly appreciate it. We appreciate your donations to our PayPal locations as well. We appreciate you sending us donations to our post box. We greatly appreciate it. It means the world to us. It helps us keep this program on the air, literally. We appreciate that so much. Eli says, God bless you, Ron, and all the lovely men and folks in the stream. Thank you so much. 
We appreciate that. Folks, you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared. And I'm going to show you more and more. Tomorrow night after we show you Mount Shasta and Lassen, then I'm going to talk about emergency preparedness. I'm also going to talk about other things that happen around the globe that you need to know about that may affect your own lives and the lives of your family. That's why we're on the air. Tonight, I wanted to leave you with a message. Every night at the end of our program, I try to give you a devotional. Because what we're talking about is not necessarily positive information. It's not positive because we know things are going to happen to us. It's a matter of time. In this case, the devotional is hope, helping to lift your spirits, I hope. That's why we do what we do. Now, I'm going over to John chapter 1. I love John. John taught us the gospel. In the first few verses of chapter 1, he says, In the beginning was a word, with a capital W. In the beginning was a word. In the beginning was Jesus Christ. In the beginning was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ created the earth and everything on it. In the beginning was the word, Jesus Christ. And the word was with God. Jesus Christ was with God, wasn't he? And the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. It goes on to say, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Jesus Christ called himself the light of the world. He indeed was. Very much the light of the world. In verse 5 here, it says, And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkest darkness comprehendeth it not. The darkness are evil men. Men and women that don't love and worship God. They don't comprehend the light. They don't want to listen to Jesus Christ because he has a different message. He is trying to call people to repentance. We're talking about Jesus Christ. He's trying to call people to repentance and get him to follow him. So that everyone can return to our Father in heaven. That was the message of Jesus Christ when he lived here on this earth. His message was to bring more people into his heavenly Father's kingdom. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was a true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, I'm going over to verse 39, where he say, where it says, He saith unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day. For it was the tenth hour. The Savior was calling his apostles, telling the apostles to come follow him. So he could teach his gospel to his apostles and his apostles could go out through the world and teach the world the gospel of Jesus Christ. In verse 50, Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. Believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Jesus was prophesying that his apostles 
would see great things happen to them in their day. Jesus Christ was about to commit miracles among the children of men. He had already showed people the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He showed the priests in the temple miracles. He talked to them about his Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father. Brothers and sisters, we've talked about this many times before. I love Jesus Christ. I teach of Jesus Christ. I worship Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our Savior. Indeed, the Savior and Redeemer of the world. Our elder brother. I teach everyone. And I bear testimony to you tonight, to you tonight that Jesus Christ lives. He hears and answers our prayers. He wants us to return to him. He sent us the example himself. He led the way. He led the way. Showed us the example to follow him so that we can return to our Heavenly Father's kingdom. He took upon himself the sins of the world to help us. Each one of us can learn from him. Each one of us can learn. Journey Sky Burnham is in our chat room. He says, their house burned down. We lost everything and our dogs. It's been hard without my dog. I miss him. The only thing I felt was their Bible not ruined. That's wonderful. At least you have your scriptures to read so that you know that your Savior loves you. Your Savior loves you. You may have lost everything. I'm sorry. That's sad. It's a sad commentary. I have not had my home burned down. But I have lost a great deal myself over the years. And yes, I was left with my scriptures. Pretty much that. And the clothes on my back. Brothers and sisters, I have learned a great deal. I have learned a great deal. I have learned about people over the years. One of my best friends in uh, Idaho, they used to live in Southern Washington where he had been a police officer for about 20 years. He and his wife saved enough money where she had been a teacher and held down other jobs as well. They saved every dime they had and moved their family to Northern Idaho. They built their house. They had a barn built. They built a garage with an apartment above it. So that when their children became adults, they could stay there. Or if one of their children got married and could not afford it, they could stay there until they could move out on their own. This past weekend, My friends lost their dog that had been with them since the early years of their relationship. Their dog died at age 14. The dog died on its birthday. Jeremy and Melissa And their children had just celebrated their dog's birthday earlier in the day. 
The dog went down and laid on his bed. A couple of their children sat down beside the dog and were petting the dog. The children said, something seems wrong. The family gathered around their pup where he died. That was Saturday. Things happen. We lose special family members, even our dogs, our cats, or other pets. They are our family. The Lord is only teaching us that life is short. Our Savior and our Heavenly Father are teaching us by their example. Our Heavenly Father sent us Jesus Christ, who taught us, taught us everything. He sacrificed his life for all of us. And he got, he resurrected after the third day. He paved the way that each one of us could have the blessing of resurrection after we pass from this life. And we can again live with our family members, all of our family members and all of our friends, including me with you and you with me. I cherish every one of you here in our EMA family. I cherish each and every one of you because I care. Just like I cared for Jeremy and his wife and his children and their pups and other animals. I love them. I love you. Please know that. Our Savior loves you. He's here for you. I promise you that. Our Savior is here for each one of us. I love you, brothers and sisters. I love you as my family. Please know that. The only reason I teach what I do here is so we can get pre people prepared because these things that are happening are real. And we are going to be taught a great many lessons. We're going to see more destruction. We're going to see our families and our way of life destroyed. We need to be prepared. And this channel is helping each one of us to be prepared. May God bless each and every one of you and your families. Please share this program far and wide. Share this program with your families, your extended family. Share it with your friends and neighbors. Share it with the people you care about, the people you work with, and also the people you associate with here on social media. Share it with everyone. They need to know what's going on. I've shown you what's going on tonight. It's happening. Bigger and bigger things are happening. Politically, our life is going to change. Our life is going to change. And it's not going to be in a positive way. We need to help change our own lives and prepare ourselves to live with the Savior. That is my message for you tonight. May God bless you and be with you. Rob52 is one of my mods and one of my best friends as well. I love each and every one of you. Sage Pup is one of my dearest friends. He's also one of my mods. We love you, everyone. Each and every one of us love you. May God bless you. May God be with you this day and always. God be with you until we meet again. Have a good night, everyone. If you want to support us, Don Patoka just gave you our address where you can send donations and cards and letters. I love seeing cards and letters from each of you. It makes me happy. And then when I receive them, I share with you here on the air.
because I care. I love you, brothers and sisters. I really do. God be with you until we meet again. We will see you tomorrow night. If anything else happens tonight, we'll be back on the air to talk about it as soon as the information becomes available. Otherwise, we'll see you sometime after 6 p.m., between 6 and 7 p.m. tomorrow evening with another episode of the Emergency Management Associates. Have a good night. God be with you until we meet again. Kevin is asking, can you send us sourdough bread? Yes, you can. We really appreciate that. God be with you until we meet again. Laura Marie's here, one of my dearest friends from a long time ago. I love you, Laura. You're awesome. God be with you until we meet again, everyone. We will see you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody. Much love.